Greetings everyone at home. My name is uh, Lubisi Titi, a lecturer from Kangala Tibet College, Pondo Zankomo campus. Then today I'll be presenting our lesson from the subject called ECTE Level 3. ECTE stands for Electronic Control and Digital Electronics. So, under this um, subject, we will be focusing on topic one, which is dealing about the uh, fundamentals of electronics. And then, from that topic one, we will specifically look or deal with um, module five. Module five is about the power supplies. Now, question is, what is uh, a power supply? Now, before we go further, we need to have a, a basic understanding or knowledge about this power supply. Now, to explain that, uh, this power supply, it is an electrical device that is used to convert AC voltage to DC voltage. And then, where do we get these power supplies? We can get them from our computers and even our chargers. We normally call this an adapter, but the technical word is a power supply. And also, this charger for a um, laptop is also a power supply. Now, inside these power supplies, our chargers and our adapters, inside them, there is what we call a circuit diagram. So, in order for us to convert this AC to DC voltage, there are components connected on that circuit diagram. Now, why do we have to use DC voltage? It is because our electronic device or circuit are using a DC voltage or light voltage, light current or low voltage. So, for us to achieve that, it means we will have the following stages or let me say steps. Those steps Those steps, they include transformers, rectifiers, filtering, regulation, isolation, and also protection. Now, I will explain each and every stage or the components. Now, we have what we call a transformer stage. This transformer in a circuit diagram of a power supply. Its function is to step down the voltage. So now remember, under electronics, we're dealing with low voltages. So it means all the transformers that we will be using, they will be converting 230 AC or 220 AC volt into 12 volt. So meaning we will be stepping down this 230 AC volts to 12 volt, but this 12 volt now is a DC. So the difference between the two is that under AC, we have a sine wave, but under DC, we have a straight line wave. Now, to achieve this straight line wave, we have to connect a different circuit like diodes, filtering capacitors, and also a regulator. Now, let's go to a rectifier stage. Rectifier stage, it is there uh, for converting AC voltage, pulsating DC voltage. And then we use diode for that. Then we have what we call filtering stage. Filtering stage, the function of filtering stage, it is used 
to smoothen the ripple of the rectifier voltage. Then for those uh, filtering stages, it's whereby we're using capacitors. Under regulation stage, regulation stage controls the output DC voltage so that it can be kept constant. Isolation, isolation, it's a separation input and uh, output voltage source, meaning uh, the AC voltage must be separated from the DC voltage. And then we also have protection. Protection is there uh, to, to prevent damage of our components due to overload condition. Then we can use maybe a, a fuse for uh, protecting our circuit diagram for this power supply. Now, we have to move to how this uh, rectifier circuit operate. We have a half wave rectifiers, and then we also have a full wave rectifiers. So starting with um, half wave rectifier, we use only one diode when we dealing with half wave rectifiers. The diode will be forward biased and reverse biased during each cycle of an AC sine wave. And the current will flow through a circuit only during a half off voltage cycle of a half wave. So this is a demonstration for that. Like I said, for a half wave rectifier, we only use one diode. So this diode is connected in series with a load or with a resistor. So it means if the supply here the current will flow from this direction back to the source. Now, remember, the function for this um, diode, it is used for, it, we're using that for, 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 uh, as a voltage um, rectifier. So it has polarities. We have an anode and a cathode. So meaning, when the voltage is being supplied here, the, the, the diode acts as a forward bias. And then, moving to a full wave rectifier. Full wave rectifiers, there's two methods or two ways of um, achieving the full wave under these uh, full wave rectifiers. Number one, we have what we call a center tape transformer. Number two, we have what we call a bridge rectifier. Now, explaining that part of a center tape transformer. What is a center tape transformer? It is a transformer that is equivalent to two secondary windings with a half the voltage across each. Each secondary windings are used for rectifier suppliers and we use two diodes. Now the difference between the half wave and the full wave and the center tape transformer is that here we have two diodes. So this is going to be our circuit diagram for a center tape transformer. Now, here we will be having D1 and then D2. How does it work? This is what happens. When there's a supply here of 220, remember the function of this transformer, it has to step down this 220 AC volt to 12 volt. So, and then another function of this transformer, remember, 
when there's a, a voltage supplied here, there's current induced uh, on this uh, primary windings, and then it, it, it is induced to the secondary um, windings through a magnetic field process. Now, for a current flow here, it means when D1 is on, it will act as a forward bias. And then when D1 is on, it means D2 is going to be off, meaning it's going to act as a reverse bias. So it means the current now will flow. Remember, here we have, this is the first, uh, is a positive half cycle. Now the current is always flowing from the high potential, meaning it's gonna flow from this direction through T1. And then when it gets here, it cannot come to this diode. Why? Because we said when T1 is on, T2 is off and it's acting as a reverse bias. So it means it will go or it will flow through the resistor and then back to the transformer. And then now when we go to uh, T2, negative cycle, this was T1. I've already explained the flow of current. Now, for a negative cycle, here we will have negative and positive. Now, our current for this uh, negative cycle Since the current always flow from the high potential, it means our current now is going to flow from this side through this uh, D2. Remember, our second cycle, it means D2 now is on, but D1 is off. So it will flow through D2, and then it cannot come to D1. Why? Because D1 acts as a reverse bias and is off for now. So again, it will also go to the resistor or through the resistor back to the source. So this is how it works uh, under a center tape transform. Now we have what we call a bridge rectifier. Right, under bridge rectifier you need to understand um, the operation of uh, how the current flow under this uh, bridge rectifier. But the question is what is this bridge rectifier? Now, to explain that, a bridge rectifier is an AC to DC converter that rectifies the main NC input to DC output. And we use four diodes. So now there's a difference. Taking you back to the half wave rectifier, we were using one diode. And then for center tape, we we're using two. Now, for a bridge rectifier, we're using four diodes, meaning we'll be having D1, D2, D3, and D4. Right. Now, when the current is supplied here on the first <coughs> cycle, It means now, since the current is always flowing from the high potential, the positive side. And now we have four diodes here. How the current is going to flow here? It's only two diodes that would be on. Now, the current will flow in this direction. And then, if you can check here between D1 and D4, 
Give for act as a reverse bias. And then this D1 act as a forward bias. Meaning the current will flow through D1. And if you can check D4 and D2, they are facing the same direction. Meaning D4 and D2 are all acting as what? As a reverse bias. Now the current that is flowing through D1 will not pass D2 because it's reversed. It will go through the load or through the resistor. And then if you can check D1 and D3, they are facing the same direction. So this current will flow through D1 and then through R, it will come and flow in a D3 and then back to the source. That's the first cycle. So if you can check D1 and D3 are on at the same time. So this is our D1, D2, D3. So this is our positive or our first cycle. D1 and D3 are on at the same, at the same time. Now we're coming for the second cycle, the negative one. Before it was a positive uh, side on the first one. Now, then if you can remember, the first side for, for the positive, D1 and D3 were on, but D2 and D4 were off. So meaning, now, for a negative half side, it means the current will flow from the transformer through D2, and then because D1 is acting as a reverse bias, it means the current will not flow to this direction, but it will flow through the resistor. And then, now, D1 and D3, since they're acting as a reverse bias, again, it means this current will not flow to this D3 because it's acting as a reverse bias. It will go to D4 back to the source. So we did not achieve this um, line uh, waveform for DC. Why? Because there are ripples. So for us to reduce the number of ripples, it means we have to introduce what we call a filtering capacitor on our circuit. This uh, filtering capacitor, it must be connected parallel to the load or between the load. This is how it will look like. We can put it here. Okay. So now, since that we have this ripple, it means our waveform will look in this form. <clears throat> this was our input. And then our output before introducing the filtering capacitor. Our output waveform was like this. D1 D2, D3, and D4. But if you can check, D2 and D4 are in a form of what? Of a pulsating DC. Now, because we have a filtering capacitor, filtering capacitor, since it reduces the number of ripples, it means the aim here is to achieve this straight line. But because of these uh, ripples, now, it means our waveform now will be in this form because of this ripple capacitor. Or we can write it like this. So, now the reason why we're using this filter 
capacitor is because we want to reduce the number of what? Of ripples. What are those ripples? Ripples are unwanted high frequency AC signals in the output of a rectifier. So that's it about the waveform of a bridge rectifier. Now, for conclusion, normally when I check the test or the exams, previous question papers, what they normally ask, <clears throat> they always ask students to explain the operation of the bridge rectifier using a um, photo or they will ask you to explain the half wave rectifier. So sometimes if they, if they can say, explain the operation of a full wave rectifier, it's up to you to use center tape or bridge rectifier. Now, another question that they can ask is uh, the difference between center tape transformer and the bridge rectifier. So this uh, center tape transformer and the bridge rectifier, it has advantages and also disadvantages. Now, for a center tape versus um, bridge rectifier, let's check the advantages of center tape. Center tape advantage. They are more efficient than the other rectifiers. They create less ripples. The average voltage for a full wave rectifier signal is twice that of a half wave. Meaning, if the secondary voltage of this center tape was 24, it means it's going to be divided into two. It's going to be 12, 12. And then disadvantages of center tape. They are expensive. And then um, the diode have a higher peak inverse voltage. Now looking for advantages of a bridge rectifier. The advantages is that uh, transformers uh, that are used is very cheap. And then no center tape is required on the transformer. And then the disadvantage of the bridge rectifier, it uses four diodes, meaning you will have to spend more money to buy these uh, diodes. Then um, that's the end of our lesson. Next time when we meet, we'll be doing the calculations of how to get the voltage, peak voltage, and the average voltage. Right, that's it for today. So for any further questions, you can visit our website for Kangala Tivet College. Try to check um, Facebook and follow the link of a WhatsApp group. Any questions so that we can be able to assist you. Thank you.